What up guys? It's Chris with Bottle Cap Barbecue, coming at you today with another collaboration. This time, it's not gonna be one of the massive collaborations with a bunch of other channels. This time, I'm keeping it special. Recently, I was in a chat with Rich and Miss Katie over at Rich's River Smokers, West Virginia. Say that five times fast, I had to concentrate. <laughs> but just during the chat, uh, we started talking about collaborations and he, he mentioned, hey, if you wanna do something, just let me know. Well, I let him know and the idea that we came up with was filet mignon. Hey, if you wanna go check out Rich's River Smokers West Virginia, I'm gonna leave a link to this channel up above in the iCard. Not only does he have a great channel, but he recently started up a website to sell all of his products. And I know he has some other stuff in the works. So I'll leave a link to his website down below as well. It's richesriverbarbecue.com. So go check it out. But now let's get to this filet. As I was thinking about it, I know filet mignon is that staple in almost any steakhouse. And not anymore, but it used to be served a lot with bacon wrapped. So I'm gonna be bringing that back today. So I'm gonna be doing a bacon wrapped filet. Now the classic seasoning is salt and pepper, and that's really all you need for the steak. It has a lot of flavor, it's very lean. But being a competition guy, you know I gotta put a little something extra on it. And Rich, if you look closely, you might recognize something. All right guys, enough talk, let's get this filet started. So here's our filet. Now the reason why this stuff is so expensive in restaurants is this stuff is expensive. This stuff was about $20 a pound, so this is for a special occasion, so you want to treat this right. Now I have trimmed any fat that I saw, but this is a good piece of meat right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our bacon ready. So I got this applewood smoked bacon. Give me a nice compliment out there. We're going to be cooking this over the grill, so we're not going to be smoking it, so we want to bring as much flavor as possible. That's so why I went ahead and got this, the good smoked bacon. And depending on how your bacon looks, it might change the way you wrap it. Like for instance, on mine, I have this huge section of fat, so I might actually go ahead and chop it off right there. And you're gonna play with this depending on what kind of bacon you get. Basically, you just want a single piece going around the entire edge. And I got a really good thick cut filet. I mean, this thing is at least inch and a half thick. So I think two pieces of bacon is going to do it. We're going to bind the edge. So I don't have to worry about it falling off or anything. Just want to make sure we have the right size bacon. When you start. Yep. So two pieces would have done it. So this goes back in the package. Save for later. So you can see what I'm talking about. The, the bacon is going to cover the entire edge of the filet. Perfect. Okay, now we know how much bacon we need. Go ahead and lay it out. We're going to start the flavors. If you've watched me at all, you know I layer the flavor all the time. First thing we're going to do is we are going to get a little bit of oil on the bacon. It's going to help it crisp up. And I'm using, using pure olive oil has a medium to a low smoke point, so it's gonna help crisp up. And the reason why we're using it is we are actually going to put some bacon on here. Or <laughs> we're gonna put some, some pepper on here so it's like peppered bacon. Now you don't have to do this, this depends on, on your taste. But I like a good peppered bacon. Now we're gonna season our filet. As a binder, we're gonna use some Worcestershire sauce. Just a little bit, just a little binder. The Worcestershire sauce will give a nice little um, savory note in the end, but it's not gonna make a huge taste difference. It's just a binder. Now we're gonna add a couple different things. First thing we're gonna do is, hey Rich, check this out. This is Rich's River Dirt Sweet. And, I, and I'm using the sweet um, just as a light layer right here. It has a great barbecue flavor and it's gonna give a nice small pop of sweetness. See I didn't didn't put too much on there. Like I said this filet already has a lot of flavor in it. I'm not gonna overpower it with extras just enough to make it stand out from the rest. Okay now we're gonna come back with a top layer of Luton Booty Barbecue. What's your beef? This stuff is great on steak as a top layer. Good pepper note, 
has thick chunks of spices, just enough to make it pop. All right, now we're set to wrap. I have over here um, my butcher's twine in a little bowl. Pro tip, put it in a bowl so it doesn't roll away. We're gonna put our bacon around, kind of pull it tight so it holds on by itself initially. Also stretches it out and creates a, a tighter grip. There we go. Because we want this thing to be as tight of a, as a medallion as possible. All right, take your twine. That should be good enough. Don't be afraid to use more than you need. And we're going to go to, the, we're gonna actually gonna do two Two wraps, so kind of wrap it around twice just to get a nice hold towards the bottom and just give a good pull. And when you wrap it around like that, it holds on tighter, so you can let go and hold, pull it, hold tight without it losing its grip. Okay. And one more. So, so you have it wrapped twice, pull, kind of snug it up. That's gonna hold. Give me time to tie it. There, there you have it. Twice. All right, we're gonna let this sit on the counter. Um, I pulled it straight from the fridge, so we, we do want to we do want to bring bring the temperature up a little bit. As my buddy Hobo found out, bringing up the room temperature is a cliche. It's just a figure of speech. Do not bring the thing up to room temperature. That means it's gonna be out for like nine hours. That's a big no-no. So it's just gonna be out enough time for us to get the grill started up. So I'm gonna cook on the on the Weber today. I'm gonna to fill up a one chimney of charcoal, get it heated up, and we'll go out there and grill this thing up. All right, so we're ready to roll. I use one full chimney of charcoal, and I'm over, I have it all the way over there on that side. I have the bottom grates um, checked to about halfway and maybe three quarter way. It's about 500, 580. So I want anywhere from 550 to 600 degrees. So, all right, we're good to go. Now this is gonna be a kind of a fast cook. So here's what it looks like after, after about half hour. It's been about half hour since we seasoned up. Sorry for the light guys. All right, so we're doing two minutes per side. Get a timer ready. Ready? Here we go. Nice sizzle. Start timer. Two minutes per side. Close it up between. All right, we're right at two minutes. Now I said two minutes per side, I meant two minutes and then rotate. We want those nice hash marks. So over here, rotate 40 degrees and down. And close. Okay, two more minutes is up. We are going to flip now to the other side. So again, moving to the hot side. Let's do a flip and press. All right, we're at two more minutes. We're gonna do our last rotate. Back over to the hot side, 40 degrees. And push. Okay, now at this point, we're not gonna rotate or flip it again. Right now, what we're looking for is our temp. All right, we're at nine minutes total. Not gonna do any more cooking on the sides, flat sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start rolling it along the edge. About 30 seconds each roll. All right, that's it. Time's up, we're at the temp. Get this off. Look at that. Look at that. Ah. All right, inside. Look at that. 
Oh, all right, so we're gonna let it rest. And I actually have some compound butter here. So we'll do one dab right on top. So as it rests, that butter is gonna go all over it. All right, this thing's been resting for about five minutes. Obviously the compound butter is not gonna all melt onto there, but it's nice and soft. Spread around there, there you go. Look at the color in this thing. See, if you can see that. There you go. Put the bacon on there, nice and rend rendered. This thing is beautiful all around. It's gonna be a nice medium rare. Let's go right down the middle. We're gonna cut right through the string. There we go. Cutting right through the string. That's, 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 that's the steak. That's the string I'm cutting through. All right, you ready? Ready for this? Here. Oh, look at that. Tender it is. Good, medium rare. Good, medium rare. <laughs> All right. Man, let's get that string off. So obviously when you're doing this, go ahead and get that string off first. I actually have scissors right here. I just <laughs> got too excited. Right, let's see if you guys can, can see that. Got a nice little piece here with the bacon. See how it's staying on there? go bacon oh if you can see the color on that sorry guys still haven't figured out this lighting situation I'm working on it I promise I'm working on it there you go that well oh, man I'm sorry did you guys want to see this Oh my God, it's so good. All right. <laughs> oh man. I don't know if you guys can hear it. There's a crunch. It's that edge of the bacon. That's crispy. <laughs> oh, so good. All right. So I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of my videos. I always do a taste test, just like everybody else does. But this is kind of out of the ordinary. Um, the lighting is horrible. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not in the right spot. I'm kind of flustered. I just want to eat this thing. I am that excited about it. This was a, oh my God, successful cook. Overall time was about 15 minutes. So if you have a, about 15 minutes to spare, do it. And there's a reason why the filet is so expensive at the, at the restaurants. It is so freaking tender. Man, I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I honestly am overwhelmed just how good the filet is. Um, I've only cooked filet a couple times, but it's never been in a raw steak form like this. It's always been as something else, which you guys will be seeing soon as well. But uh, guys, give it a try. Rich, thank you very much for doing this collaboration with me. I really appreciate it, man. Guys, go check out Rich. I'll have his link up here. Link down below to his channel and to his website, richesriverbarbecue.com. Please check it out. Um, I used his... Right here, I use a sweet rub, uh, Rich's River Dirt. Uh, he has a sweet, he has an AP, and he has a hot and spicy. I also have the hot and spicy. Um, probably would have been good on the steak, but I just wanted to go more savory and a little bit of sweetness. And uh, and honestly, the sweetness just adds that extra little something in, in the back. It's not like oh my god, sweet. It's I mean, you can tell it's there, but it's not like it's not like sweet. It's it it, it complements the savory very well. So. Rich, thank you very much for doing the collaboration with me. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be checking out your video as well. So guys, again, please go check out Rich over at richesriverbarbecue.com and Miss Katie as well, his wife. I actually got this picture from her. She does her own artwork like that, but basically photography. She has a, a, a website on Facebook. It's Cat's Crazy Creations. That's where I got this. She hooked me up with this. Um, I love it. So Katie, thank you. Guys. That's it. I want to devour the rest of the steak. So if you like this video, 
let me know down below and you know what to do. But guys, thank you very much for watching. And you know what I always say, until you see you next time, keep on grilling.